Hello, I'm the Amazing Atheist, and a lot of people tell me that they themselves can't become atheists because atheism just doesn't offer the same sort of deep spiritual fulfillment that religion does. Well, listen here, I tell you what, you can have your science and your evidences and your facts, but that don't mean nothing to me. Because a man like me, when I'm sitting there in the pews of my church and I feel the Holy Spirit crawling all over me like a bunch of bugs, and not bad bugs, but like bugs of salvation and enlightenment crawling all over me, gnawing at my skin, but in a pleasant and uplifting sort of way, I know. I don't need no textbook to tell me what's what. I know that there is a Lord up there in heaven and He is saving my soul from the, the very hell that He Himself created where He would punish me if I didn't accept Him as my Lord. Which is kind of strange if you really think about it because that's kind of like me going to my wife and being like, Woman, I'm going to beat you if you don't get dinner on the table in ten minutes. And then she gets dinner on the table in ten minutes and I'm like, well, you, you should be praising me for saving you from that beating. When you think about it like that, God kind of sounds like an asshole. Ah, oh, darn it! I blasphemed again. I gotta get back to church. I'll see y'all later. I disagree with that notion in both directions. I disagree that religion is fulfilling, and I disagree that it is the place of any belief system, or lack thereof, to fulfill us in the first place. It's a nonsensical argument against disbelief. Saying that you can't accept atheism because it doesn't make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside is kind of like saying that you can't stop believing in Santa Claus because then you won't get any presents. Look, if I believe in Santa, he's gonna give me presents. If I don't believe in Santa, I ain't getting no presents. Choice is clear, buddy. Huh, yeah, good point. Except it doesn't matter whether you don't believe in Santa or you do believe in Santa. The fact remains, there is no Santa. He can't give you any presents, because, uh, he don't exist. Now, perhaps believing in Santa is about more than just getting presents. Perhaps the greatest gift of all that Santa gives you is that feeling of comfort against the turmoils and the harshness of the world. But guess what, folks? It doesn't matter, because there still ain't any Santa Claus. Lots of things would be comforting if they were true. You'd probably be happier if you believed yourself to be a movie sex icon with an army of groupies to choose from. But you know what? Chances are you probably aren't. And it may make you feel good to believe that you are, but it would also make you insane. I am Johnny Depp! Let me out of this straitjacket and I'll prove it! <laughs> I was in Pirates of the Caribbean! I played a gay pirate! It was awesome! Just because something feels good to believe doesn't make it true. A warm and fuzzy feeling in your chest is not proof of anything other than the appeal of a particular idea. And appeal and accuracy do not march in lockstep. Yes, occasionally they do synchronize. In those rare but beautiful moments where things genuinely do go your way, the fates have smiled upon you. But more often than not, appeal and accuracy could not be at further ends of the spectrum. And that's not unusual at all, because desire itself is a reaction to the perceived lack of something in your life. In other words, we want there to be a God precisely because there isn't one. We see that there is no God, and we fill that void with our desire to fill that void. But is that filling truly satisfactory? If I fill a donut, not with jelly, but the desire for jelly, would you be able to tell the difference? Yes, of course you would, because we all understand that a donut filled with the desire for jelly rather than jelly is empty. If I write the word gun on a piece of paper, that piece of paper becomes a symbol, a concept which is standing in for a concretion. 
Guns actually exist, so when you see the word gun on this piece of paper, you associate it with those existent guns. You know that this piece of paper represents a weapon which fires metal projectiles and kills people or animals or shoots holes in things at the very least. Now, some of you might see a handgun, and some of you might see a rifle, and some of you might see an assault rifle, and some of you might see a shotgun, but you all see a weapon. You all see something which fires high-velocity projectiles, because that's what a gun is, and we all understand that. But what if I write the word God on a piece of paper? This paper is not a symbol. It is not a concept standing in for a concretion. This piece of paper is God. I'm sure that if you're a Christian, you've heard plenty of atheists asking the smarmy question, well, have you ever seen God? Well, now you can answer, yes, I have. And an atheist showed him to me. God, audience, audience, God. Now you've met. You see, God is only a concept. So when you're looking at this piece of paper, what you're actually looking at is the place in your own psyche where God resides. Maybe you're a liberal Christian and you see a compassionate figure who wants to bring peace and understanding to the world. Or maybe you're a fundamentalist Christian and you see a guy who's angry and if you don't obey him, he'll send your ass to roast in hell, so you better do what he says. Christians, Muslims, Jews, pagans, atheists, all of them are seeing something different when they look at this piece of paper, but all of those different things are one thing. They are God, the concept that is called God. To recap, this is not a symbol. This is God. Now, it might be a matter of personal interest to you what I see when I look at this piece of paper. I see all of your different ideas about what this page is. I see every God, but I see beyond them. I see the emptiness that resides within them. I see all of the emptiness of mankind that we will never try to fill, because instead of trying to fill it, we've decided to pretend that it's already full, full of this. In other words, folks, what I see is just a piece of paper. So the question of the day is this. What is God to you, and how does that perception affect your life? Please favorite this video. Also, I would like to ask everyone watching this to please donate to Free Speech Vids. The link can be found in the sidebar. We thrive on the support of concerned viewers like you uh, who want to see something a little bit different. All of you who donate, all of you, even if it's just a small amount, have my gratitude and the gratitude of everyone else involved in this project. I thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm The Amazing Atheist. Peace out. I guess God is dead. Huh, Nietzsche? You can use that if you want to. Just saying.